Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2196. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today, I'm in Overland Park, Kansas, with a very special guest by the name of Brett Hatfield. Brett, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Absolutely. All right. We're going to lay some stripes down, as they say, because I'm talking to a guy who likes Corvettes. He likes old cars that go fast. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Brett? I was given a 1960 Corvette for having been a speeder and reckless driver all through high school. Okay, back up. This doesn't make any sense at all to me. First of all, who gave you a car for being a reckless driver on top of the fact they gave you a sports car? What what was the methodology here? Uh, my dad had told me to go find a new car, a new to me car for graduation because I had utterly destroyed the Camaro I drove through school. And when he called his insurance agent to find out what it would cost to insure me on the little Mazda RX-7 I found, his insurance agent looked me up and said, do you know what your, how your kid drives? <laughs> do you, do you know, know how many your, tickets he has? Do you know who your kid is? <laughs> and I, I had paid a lot of these tickets without telling him. Uh. So this is the first he's catching wind of it. And the insurance agent this look guy that he was, I wish I could find him now. I, I owe him so much. Says offhanded, for what it's going to cost to insure him in an RX-7, he might as well be driving a Corvette. <laughs> My dad had a red and white 60 Corvette sitting in a barn that he wasn't driving. It was in good shape, but it just wasn't being driven. Yeah. So he gets off the phone. He was furious, and I was standing in front of him. So I thought, oh, geez, I've had it. Yep. He gets off the phone. And tells me what the insurance agent said and says, well, how about it? And I'm thinking, how, how about what? And he says, do you want to drive that red Corvette? <laughs> and, <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. I would, sir. Yeah. And he's he's thinking, I just saved the price of an RX-7. I'm thinking I get to be king stud of the universe. Yeah. Wow. What a story. Well, that's a unique one for cars. <laughs> yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> Well, my, uh, I never got rid of the car. I still own it. Well, good for you. And and yeah, story cars like that, you got to keep. That's for sure. Well, let me give you a proper introduction here, Brett. Brett Hatfield is a lifelong automotive enthusiast and has 30 plus years as a member of the National Corvette Restorers Society. Go figure. He fell in love with cars at the age of four, riding in his father's 1972 Corvette convertible that was Elkhart Green. Brett studied auto restoration and business management at McPherson College. Had many people from that college on this show. He has sold cars for Chevrolet, owned a Corvette dealership, an auto storage warehouse, and detailing business. Brett is the host of the Driven Radio Show podcast, is a senior auction analyst for Sports Car Market Magazine. Just got my new one. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> a contributing author of GM Authority, Ford Authority, and the Cadillac Society. His car collection includes that 1960 Corvette that he acquired when he was 18 and a 1965 Corvette Stingray convertible. We'll be back in just a moment. So buckle up. We're going on a ride with Brett. And you know what that means? We might get pulled over. We'll be right back. Here's our sponsors. <laughs> Do you live where the climate is a great challenge? I do. Up here in the Pacific Northwest, it rains a lot during the winter and even into the spring. And that's why I love Covercraft's newest five-layer all-climate cover. It was specially developed and engineered for anything that Mother Nature can throw your way. It's soft, it's breathable, and easy to store. And it pampers your paint plus your interior surfaces from maximum UV, rain, dust, and snow protection. Add their gust guards if you live in a windy area for extra protection to keep your cover secure. Your five-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's specific attention to detail, form, and fit. The quality and attention has been their standard since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and your watercraft, too. Every one of my vehicles is protected by a Covercraft cover, whether stored indoor or out. 
and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com, they'll give you 10% off your Covercraft order. That's right, 10% off. Just use the code YEAH21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. American Collectors Insurance is my go-to for collector car insurance. But did you know they also insure your valuable collections of automobilia and other collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. They insure a lot of items, including automobilia, wine, baseball cards, books, figurines, die-cast models, model trains, glassware, sports memorabilia, toys, and a whole lot more. American Collectors Insurance, they've been protecting us enthusiasts since 1976. They provide you with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a long history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACI. Yeah, that's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Green's here at Cars. Yeah, American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Fall is here, and you know what that means. Time to put a good coat of protection on your vehicle. I'm teamed up with AutoGeek, and they've been the leading source of auto detailing products, accessories, and expert knowledge for more than 20 years. What started back in 1997 as a small mail order catalog company grew into a multi website based e commerce store, and that's what they are today. With a large online presence on its own website featuring close to 100 different brands, AutoGeek has grown to be the largest car care retailer in the country. AutoGeek's wholesale program serves accounts in over 30 countries, and its retail sector ships worldwide. If you want to protect your vehicle this fall, and you should, go to AutoGeek.net for the best product selection on the internet today and technical support. AutoGeek.net is where I go for my detailing needs. That's AutoGeek.net. So, Brett, we are back. So let's talk a little bit about this life around cars you've created for yourself. And I also want to know, as a fellow podcaster, how you came across or how you started Driven Radio Show. I know you have a co-host there by the name of Mark, another Mark, Mark Groves. Uh, But let's talk about your history first and how it has evolved into the car world that you're so deeply ingrained with. Uh, it, it really started with my dad. That green Corvette was one of my first memories as a child. And for some reason that, that set the hook, I was fascinated with cars when I was young. I wanted go-karts and dirt bikes. And I, I just always, I, it started off just wanting to go fast. Over time, it developed into an appreciation for the machinery and, uh, the mechanic nature of everything. And then the history over the years, dad had several more Corvettes. A couple of those wound up being mine. Uh, I had several Corvettes. It's not that I, I like the Corvettes to the exclusion of everything else. Uh, I've had a lot of other interesting stuff, but I always had a lot of fun with them and have always enjoyed being around them. And the one I got, the, the red one, the 60 Corvette that I got when I was 18, I never got rid of. There have been six others along the way. Well, you got to keep uh, the one your dad gave you. I mean, that's kind of oh, yeah. one of those mandatory things. But, you know, another thing that I know you do, you're a senior auction analyst for our mutual friend, Keith Martin, at Sports Car Market Magazine. How did you get involved in being an authority on uh, auctions and pricing cars and so forth? Well, I'd always been a, a fan of going to auctions. I'd gone to Barrett-Jackson, started going to Barrett-Jackson auctions, I think, back in the 90s, and was a... Uh, uh, subscriber to uh, Corvette Market when Keith was publishing that. That became American Car Collector and also wound up being a, a su- subscriber to Sports Car Market Magazine. And Sports Car Market or American Car Collector, I don't recall which, one of them sent out an email to their subscribers eight years ago saying, would you like to be an auction analyst? And I responded to it and I said, yes, I would. And they asked me for a writing sample and asked me if I had a camera. And I said, yeah, I did. And then I didn't hear anything for a long time. 
And about a year later, their auction editor sent me an email saying, still want to be an auction analyst? I said, mm-hmm. sure. He said, great, go to Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They sent me to a lake auction in Dallas, and that was the first one I went to. And it, it was kind of a, a trial by fire, but it's, uh, you know, you figure it out. I really love what I do for Keith, and I, I try to thank him with every opportunity I get for letting me do this. So uh, while I've got the time, uh, thanks to Keith, uh, the editor-in-chief, Jeff Sabatini, and the auctions editor, Paul Escher, they all let me travel all over the country and cover all kinds of auctions. And because of that, I've gotten to meet amazing, wonderful people from every corner of the car world. And that really has formed the basis of the guests that we have on Driven Radio Show. Very cool. Well, I want to talk about the Driven Radio Show. How did that all come about? What is your show all about? And, uh, you know, you guys talked to some, well, a lot of the same people. In fact, the day we're recording this, uh, Mr. Sacamino, who's just on my show, he was a return visitor, is a, has been a guest on your show. So what do you guys do on the Driven Radio Show? Uh, just like I said, we get to interview interesting people from the collector car world. And I've gotten to meet lots of them. And then, yeah, you know, you're a car guy, too. You meet other people through your contacts, through the people you meet. We get to have them on once a week for anywhere from a half hour to an hour, sometimes a little bit longer. And we do have a lot of repeat guests. Uh, we have the, we have, uh, Dave Kenny and Greg Ingold from the Haggerty Price Guide on four times a year. Every time a new price guide comes out, I like having John Sacamino and Andy Reid on together because they bounce you off each other really well. <laughs> yeah. Those are two great guys. We, I've just gotten to have lots of really neat conversations with interesting people. The show was not my idea. It was Mark L. Grove's idea, my co-host and engineer. We met through a mutual friend. Mark has a passion for ugly old Mopars and anything (laughs) with Kragers on it. And we started talking about car stuff. And Mark had been wanting to do a car show himself, but he he didn't quite have the background that I had. And I didn't have the radio background that Mark has. Mm. And together, we do a pretty good show. And our show sounds fantastic, and it's all Mark's fault. He's the reason that show sounds as good as it does. There you go. Nice to have that quality uh, engineering and IT in the back pocket. Yeah, when I started this podcast, oh, thank God, I, yeah, I didn't know how to do anything. I had to learn. A, I watched a lot yeah. of YouTube videos. That's how I learned. I, again, I got to thank Mark. He, uh, he makes a car nerd look really good. <laughs> well, that's his job. So nice job, Mark. We'll have to get him on this show, too. I'd love to have him be a guest here. Yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about the car market, used car market, because you work deep in it, being an auction analyst for Sports Car Market Magazine and working around all these different marks, entities, groups, and clubs, and so forth. What's your interpretation of what's happened, especially in the last year to two years? Because we've all seen this dramatic climb in car values. There seems to be a lot more people in the market sector buying collector cars. We're going through another one of those bubbles. And now, of course, with interest rates, inflation, things are starting to cool down as they do because for guys like you and I have been around for a while, we see these cycles happen. But what's your interpretation of the collector car market today and any kind of a crystal ball vision you have of what's going to happen in the next six to 12 months? Uh, The next six to 12 months, I think we're going to see a significant cooling and we're going to see a correction in prices. This is my thought. It may be different, but I think that the market having been as white hot as it has been for the last few years particularly since COVID, it's just, it's unsustainable. Things can't keep going up and up and up indefinitely. You Mm -hmm. you have to have a period to cool off and reset. And I think we're going to see that. Inflation rates, you know, a lot of people who are buying collector cars are not leveraging themselves to get there. So inflation rates may not be, uh, or uh, interest rates may not be so much a factor, but inflation and business, you know, uh, the economy generally cooling off is going to slow that down somewhat. And we've all seen prices on cars go through at auctions and thought, what? <laughs> yeah. Why'd that sell for that? <laughs> I, I saw that with my car back in June. I'm like, whoa, yeah. that was nice. Yeah, bonus. Yeah, it's been great if you've been selling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's been, been tough if you've been buying. But we're a little overdue for a correction. It has been fun to watch everything go up the way it has. 
it has been fun covering it and seeing all the excitement. And, you know, a lot of this is due to COVID. When you're, when everybody was locked down and they couldn't get out and go to events, you couldn't go to sporting events, you couldn't go to concerts, you couldn't go to gatherings, you couldn't, uh, be around lots of people. Uh, a lot of us remembered, Hey, we're car people. I can do stuff with my car. I can work on my car. I can take it for drives. I can go out and enjoy it. And I don't have to be around anybody. Else. And I think, I think COVID drove an awful lot of that. And that's not a unique thought. That's been said in a lot of places, but it's been said in a lot of places because it happens to be true. You know, one of the things too, going to as many auctions as you go to, we've seen these auction houses for the last 12 to 18 months have record sales every single time. So I would assume in alignment with what my thoughts are and yours are, is that's going to be cooling off as well. Because a lot of people say, well, you got investors putting their money, taking their money out of the market, putting it into cars. Um, you got people that, you know, took out the PPP loans that are probably went and bought cars with them. They didn't have to pay those loans back, many of them. Uh, so do you think that's going to start to happen? And do you think we're going to start to see that come January with the first auctions in Arizona? Well, I think there's a possibility that they'll slow down. But the other reason that people were putting their money into cars is when the market dips or did dip, cars are a more tangible asset. They're never worth zero. They might be worth less, but they never go to zero. Stocks can do that. Right. Uh, you know, you see a lot of people who are taking a, a, a pretty good hit in their 401ks and their retirement accounts and their do investments. I, do you have to bring that uh, up, Brett? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, we're all, but we're all subject to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not like I'm immune either. But, you know, the, the cars always have some tangible value. I don't know that that's the, the most highly recommended place to shield your money, but it's fun. Yes. It's tough to drive an investment or a piece of art. You can take a car out and have a heck of a good time. Yeah, that's for sure. I like to talk about mentors, influencers, people that have really made an impact on your life in a positive way. Is there somebody like that in your life? No, absolutely. My dad, Jim Hatfield, he's just been the best father. Now, uh, the three siblings, I have a brother and a sister. We may have been frustrated by the fact that he worked as hard as he did and he, he worked as the hours he did, but uh, he really made a fantastic life for us. And he taught us uh, how to deal with people. He was a, he was fantastic with his employees. Taught me how to be a, a great dad and a grandfather and a husband, a brother, an uncle, a son, the value of doing good deeds and then keeping the dignity of the people you help. I think one of the most overwhelming things he did was showing us the uh, the benefits of having a strong work ethic, of working really hard and doing a good job. And he's a fantastic guy. I could probably eat up the entire show bragging about my dad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, but I'll pay him the best compliment I can. One day I hope to be the man my father is. Yeah, it's nice. And I tell you, listeners, sometimes I have the pleasure and joy of, of talking with my guests before we get started here. And <laughs> Brett and I spoke for like an hour uh, before we started this show. A lot was about cars, but a lot was about his dad and his family. And I got to learn a lot about the special man that your dad is. And your dad's still with you. You're fortunate there, right? He's doing well. Yeah, he lives a mile from me. Yeah, I, I tease him. I, I told him if I'd known he was going to buy that house, I wouldn't have moved so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're very fortunate. I lost my dad about five years ago, and uh, you don't realize until you lose a family member, and it's cliche, but it's true. I mean, even to this day, I'll have something that I will want to text my dad or call him, and I go, oh, I can't. Uh, uh, no. So, uh, yeah, you're very fortunate to have him in your world, no doubt. Now, if somebody was going to go into... A career like yours in the automotive sector, what are some of the ways that you might recommend that they try to break into this field? Because you changed, you worked in your dad's development company, real estate business, and then you went back to McPherson College a little bit later in life and made this pivot, if yeah. you will. So if somebody had listening today that, you know, said, you know what, I got a nice job, but I just don't like what I'm doing. I want to do what Brett and Mark are, talk cars, hang out with people. It was timing. It really was timing. The email that found me from Sports Car Market, let me back up. When I got out of McPherson, I came back home and I wound up getting a job as a project manager for a development company. You know, my dad had been in the lumber business and real estate business, so uh, that was pretty na a pretty natural fit. 
the housing bubble that when the housing bubble burst in 2008 it really put an end to that <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> yeah and uh we had a lot a lot of empty spec houses and if you got a hundred or so empty houses, you're not a builder anymore. You're a landlord now. Mm -hmm. And I found out after a few years of doing property management, I don't really care for it. Very yeah, much. it's not much fun. Fortunately, my mom, who's the other great person, parent in my life, was a kindergarten teacher and she taught our older kids how to read really early. And I've, I've always been a very avid reader and able to write pretty well. So when the opportunity came up to write for a living, I jumped on it and I was lucky to be able to do so. I think the best advice I can give you if you do this, and I, this is probably the same with any job, stick to it. Don't give up. Don't be afraid to look at what you're doing and change what you don't like. And for the love of God, just keep grinding, keep working, keep driving at it. Don't quit. Just don't quit. As far as getting in, I wish I had better advice. It was dumb luck and timing. <laughs> well, the other part of it is today, there are lots of ways to reach out to people that didn't exist back when I was young and starting my career. I mean, I had to find clients uh, in the graphic design industry, and I used to drive downtown and walk into a building and look at the all the companies listed on the board, go up, knock on the door, try to get past the receptionist. Uh, you know, nowadays there's LinkedIn and there's social media and Lots of ways to reach out, offer your skill sets, ask, meet people, network. Um, it's just there's so much to do now. So lots of opportunities. Yes, there really, there really is. And I, I wish I had a better story about it, but I answered an email. And when they, they answered back, I didn't hesitate. And uh, again, I, I got to thank Keith Martin for letting me do my dream job. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> yeah, very cool. We'll take a short break. We come back. The challenge question. So keep your seatbelts tight. We'll be right back. You've heard me talk about Linkage Magazine here on Cars. Yeah, for a couple of years now. Well, they're growing. And in 2023, they're going to grow from four issues a year to six. And there's an opportunity here for you to take advantage of this growth. If you go to LinkageMag.com and click on the Renew button, if you already subscribe, you can get a great deal. Use the code RENEW6 for one year and you'll get six issues for the price of four or type in RENEW12 for two years where you also have a great savings. Plus, they'll even throw in a free Linkage hat. How cool is that? The publisher of Linkage is Donald Osborne. He's been a guest multiple times here on Cars Yeah. He's become a good friend of mine and I'll tell you, Linkage Magazine is one of those newer magazines that you're going to want to get. It's all about experiences, opinions, and values. It's a wonderful publication, something I look forward to getting. And now that I'm going to be getting six a year, <laughs> even more special. So go to LinkageMag.com. Again, use the code RENEW6 or RENEW12 to get that special deal. Do it before December 31st, 2022, so that in 2023, you'll get six issues of Linkage Magazine instead of four. Cars Yeah! has teamed up with TechForce Foundation, one of our charities of choice, to help young people who love cars, problem solving, and working with their hands pursue careers as professional technicians. From auto, collision, and restoration techs to motorcycle boats, race cars, and aviation, TechForce covers the gamut of technician opportunities. Technical education and the skills trades matter, and we need qualified skilled technicians to keep our vehicles rolling. Learn how you can help to power the technical workforce at techforce.org today. So I'd like to ask my guest about a challenge that taught a valuable lesson. May have been really painful to go through, but it taught you something that you've never forgotten. Take us on a journey. I had a Corvette dealership. I thought because I knew a lot about cars that I would know a lot about selling cars. Selling cars isn't about cars. It's about selling. And I'm not a very good salesman. I'm a lousy salesman. Uh, I, lost a, I lost a lot of money at that dealership in a real short period of time. One of the things that was a problem for me is I fell in love with every piece of inventory I ever got. I didn't really want to sell them. Yeah. You can't be a good car salesman without selling cars. <laughs> nah, that, that doesn't work very well. And I, I learned a lot of expensive lessons along the way. If I opened a car dealership now, I would certainly do it much differently. But 
writing about cars and interviewing people from the collector car world is much less fiscally dangerous, and I certainly don't have tens of thousands of dollars invested in it. So it's still, I'm still around cars. I joke about people, you know, going to auctions. I could have evaluate other people's toys. That's not the worst job in the world. No, not at all. <laughs> and again, I get to meet fantastic people. The, the car world really is about the relationships you have with people in it. And there are so many neat people in the car world. And I very much enjoy that. The lesson I have learned is one, I'm a crappy salesman. Two, car dealerships are very expensive. And three, it's a lot more fun to be involved in it on somebody else's dime. There you go. Well, as long as you learn those lessons, did you ever know a guy from the Pacific Northwest here named Bruce Levin? He was a racer. I I, I don't think I have. Well, Bruce Levin uh, lived up here. He was incredibly successful businessman in the trash business. And he leveraged a lot of his money and he decided to go racing. And he had racing teams. He had people like Bobby Rahal racing for him. And I mean, this guy, Bayside wow. Racing, serious stuff, racing 962s, Porsche Turbos, and so forth. And when Bruce, later in life, when I was changing careers before I started doing this, I was trying to figure out what to do. And I'd go up and have lunch with him, and he'd give me some of his wisdom. He was just a really unique character. Now, sadly, we lost him a few years ago to cancer. But uh, he said to me, he goes, let me tell you a story, Mark. He said, you got to stick to what you know. He said, I was yeah. really good at the trash business. And I thought I would be really good doing anything because I was such a good trash man. Well, I went off and spent mm -hmm. a whole lot of money being a race team owner and driving race cars myself, burned through a lot of cash. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll buy a car dealership. I'm good at business. And he goes, I lost a whole bunch more money and I had to go back and start another trash business to make all my money back so I could buy my airplanes and jets and yachts. Stick to what you know. That's the yeah. secret, right? So that's what you just Absolutely. said. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good li life lesson from Bruce Levin. Bless you, Bruce Levin. What a great guy. Hey, let's talk about a special vehicle. You, I, I'm hoping maybe it's something different than the great car story about your uh, red Corvette, but maybe that's the one for you. But I asked all my guests about one special vehicle. Well, I've had a couple, but the, the red Corvette always stands out. I've had that for two thirds of my life. Yeah, And I've gotten to do so much cool stuff in that car. And it's been so much fun. And I've gotten to drive. I've gotten to drive in the Colorado Rockies. I've gotten to drive around Chicago, all over the Kansas City area in the Midwest. I've gotten to be in car shows and parades and drive my daughters and my granddaughters on it. And, you know, a couple of years ago, my wife and I started delivering uh, charity Christmas gifts. In the car dressed oh, nice. up like Santa and Mrs. Claus. <laughs> oh, fun. And, and it, it's been a big part of my life. Uh, so as much as I talk about the car, and I, I should probably speak about it less, that has been just a, a fantastic car to have. And it never doesn't make people smile. Have you ever modified it or done anything to it? To, no. No? It's original? It has 57,000 original miles on it. And it is absolutely bone stock. Wow. Numbers matching. Well, yeah, that's the car. I'll, I'll put a picture of that car with Brett in it on his show notes page on the Cars yeah website. Uh, in fact, I, I sent you a follow-up email of a similar car uh, that I got to drive. Yeah, that's a good looking 61. Yeah, when I was in, uh, I was at the Covercraft factory in Oklahoma and uh, a builder of hot rods had mod highly modified that car and brought it over. It was actually raining that day that we did that photo shoot and that video shoot. So I had to drive it around. With, it didn't have a top, so I drove it around in the rain, but uh, it was a little dicey, a little scary car because it had a big, big engine in it. But those things are just cool. I mean, they're just, they're American. Yes, sir. Yeah, nice. So, I'm going to be your car psychologist here. It's a little game we play. I'm going to crawl into your head a little bit here, Brad. If you were reincarnated, manifest as a car, what would you be and why? Well, as much as I want to say Corvette, I am not. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably a late 80s Chevy Suburban 4x4, possibly a three-quarter ton. Okay. Uh, I'm a, a bigger guy. Um, a man of larger carriage. Uh, <laughs> so a Suburban is big, practical, durable, able, uh, able to adapt to about any job. All of those things seem to parallel who I think I am. You know, the, the Suburban is an interesting vehicle because when you go way back, that was pretty much a, I always, you know, you think of you at SUVs today, everyone has one and the Suburban has been 
one of the mainstay SUVs. But if you go way back, it was kind of like the the farmer's pickup truck station wagon back in the day. Yep. I mean, those old ones were pretty rough and sparse. And if you were a suburban driver today and you got in one from the 60s, you'd go, what the heck? This is like an old farm truck or something. They've just been around forever, right? Yeah, remember, remember, 60s Suburbans only had a back door on the passenger That's side. That's right. The they were a curb side. A three door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's always like, what, do you know why they did that? I, I'm not sure why they didn't have one on the driver's side. I know the passenger side because it was curbside. You wouldn't be stepping out into traffic is my assumption. That's the only thing I, there's probably somebody listening can maybe send me a message as to why they really did that. But I always thought that was kind of curious when you see those and you go, where's the other door? Why, why isn't it here? But uh, yeah, it's uh well, I appreciate your honesty on that. Yeah. We all want to be something cool and sleek, but maybe we're not. Yeah. I'm not that sleek. <laughs> How about a great book? Is there a great book you'd like to share with us today? Uh, about anything by Eric Larson. I think history always deserves more introspection and a more detailed inspection. There's another book I love. It has the world's worst title. It's The Complete Guide to Verbal Manipulation by a gentleman named James Van Fleek. But the reason I love that book is it taught me how to listen to other people. Mm. It's very strong for interviews. Okay. You know, there's some great YouTubers that advise people on great interviewing, how to find great jobs, how to answer questions that almost everybody asks. And I'm not looking for a job, but I hired a lot of people back in the day. And I wish that I had had his expertise because he's he's been an expert hirer of people uh, in HR for his whole life. And uh, really fascinating when you watch some of those. And uh, anybody out there looking for a job, go and find these on YouTube. They're all over the place. Some guys are good. Some are not very good, but uh, they're very informative on how to, uh, I guess you could say verbally, you think of the word manipulation tends to have a negative connotation, but it doesn't always, and it can benefit you. So uh, I don't think anyone's ever suggested that book before. So I'm glad you offered that. And if you go looking for it, you're probably going to find it in the bargain bin at your local bookstore. I don't think it sold real well. Okay. All right. So not as a big <laughs> a seller as Stephen Covey's Seven Habits book? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. We're going to go on the ultimate drive today. I'm going to uh, get out my big checkbook here, buy you anything you would like, park it in your driveway. You can take it on a drive and you can take anybody with you, even somebody from the past or somebody who's not living. Where are you going to be going? What are you going to be driving? Who are you going to be with? Oh, you know, this is going to sound kind of uh, hokey, but uh, my wife, Rhonda, she is the absolute best travel companion ever. She and I have driven all over the country. We almost turn, never turn the radio on in the car. We just talk and we have a great time. In, in what car? Um, Anything. Wow. There's so many. I'll uh, buy you whatever well, you like. You know, <laughs> <laughs> But probably either of the Corvettes, uh, I've only had the 65 for a little over a year. I'm still uh, on the honeymoon with that car. Yeah. Or a new one. I'd love to take a road trip in, a, in an 8th gen in a C8. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'd be driving. Okay. It's just, it's just the way we work it out. <laughs> uh, she only drives, she, she only wants to drive when I'm really tired. And like I said, we just talk about everything. We, and she she really is the best travel and always has been. Well, you're a fortunate man. How long have you guys been married? Uh, 15 years this past July. Nice. Very cool. All right. And do you have a trip that you haven't taken that would be fun if you, you know, if I could say you could take a week or two and go anywhere you'd like? Oh, um, once they rebuild it, the Florida Keys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Poor. I'd, I'd really love it love to drive there but we, we've also talked about driving to maine neither of us have seen uh, the northeastern part of the country and we both like to go a lot of great places in this country for road trips so you've taken us on a wonderful trip today brett and i can't thank you enough for spending time with me today before i let you go though could you share some words of inspiration a quote or some kind of a mantra that has great meaning for you you know i i thought about this question for a long time and i tried to come up with a really great answer and the quote that kept popping back into my head over and over and over again, it seems simplistic, but it happens to be true. It was something that Frank Zappa said, mm -hmm. it is, your mind is a lot like a parachute. It works best when it's open. Nice. I love it. I don't think anyone's ever said that one before. So you brought us a lot of new thoughts today. I appreciate that. How can people follow you and learn more about 
The Driven Radio Show. Oh, you can find us at uh, drivenradioshow.com, Driven Radio Show on Facebook and Instagram, at Driven Radio Show on Twitter, and Driven Radio Show Podcast on LinkedIn. There you go. I'll put links to all those on Brett Shunner's page. Check them out. He and his co-host, Mark. Uh, that sounds like a great show. Well, I've listened to it. It is a great show. And you guys have interviewed a lot of people that I've interviewed too. So uh, they bring a new, different kind of flair. So check out the Driven Radio Show. I want to do a shout out. Thank you to our mutual friend, Cindy Meidel, who has uh, connected us today. Cindy, thank you very much. She's bought some, brought some great guests on the show, Car PR USA. Uh, Cindy's out there in the car world. So thank you, Cindy. We appreciate it. Brett, Thanks for being so generous today with your time and sharing your experiences with our listeners. I'm so glad we got to talk. Until you and I do talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you, Mark. It was my pleasure. This was fun. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!